Um, we decided that uh, my voice isn't what it was when I was broadcasting. And uh, so I'm going to do a short one on the dangers and delights of chocolate. <laughs> and then my son Chris, who's got a good reading voice, is going to come up and read. It's not really a very good road, which is everybody's favorite in the whole book, it seems to me. And so, uh, does, is this a long? Yes. 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 Because I haven't got a strong voice. I'm told I need to use more breathing and, and breathe more deeply and all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> we don't yeah. understand it perfect. Obviously, I didn't. This is from the um, humor part. Uh, my daughter, by the way, did all the titles and most of the work of collecting things for this book. She and I, between us, sort of chose what we used, but she did the hard work, really. And this apple, which I think was an inspired idea by Robert McFarlane, is, is done by my sister Heather's son, Danny. He do, he's a, a, a pretty famous artist in Britain, uh, in Europe, and he does a series of different things. And he did a series of fruit. And so we thought, why not use his apple? And it's lovely, isn't it? I think it's beautiful. And I like the idea that the open organ, to me, represents apples. And I think we need to support our farmers. Uh, don't get me going on this. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking about the dangers and delights of chocolate, so I'd better get back to it. For so long, we felt guilty about tasting a tempting piece of chocolate. Now we are told of the benefits of this delight. A square of dark chocolate eaten daily is said to be good for the heart. The cacao bean has taken on a new glow as one of nature's beneficial foods. It is said to contain more than 300 phytonutrients. I love, it, love that word. It just simply shimmers with healthy overtones. <laughs> <laughs> it also contains a high level of oxidants, antioxidants, excuse me, vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. What an endorsement. Well, up to a point. We are warned, as so often, everything in moderation. Stopping at just one square of dark sweetness, well, that's one thing. But it's hard indeed to stop if you are, as I confess to be, a chocolate olive. <laughs> Things are just fine as long as I had a husband who kept me in check. If we were given a box of chocolates, I allowed him, I encouraged him to put them away somewhere unknown to me. Then he would produce them one daily, and we each have just one. Of course, I'd just tease my urge for more, but the box was firmly shut and hidden away, and I could live with that. Well, mostly. <laughs> One year, a neighbor introduced me to a completely new type of crescent-shaped goodies. I admired them so excessively that the couple dropped in at Christmas time to present us with a large box. By that time, I was, unable, I was usually able to resist, resist temptations as long as the box was unopened. So this was not hidden away. It sat for some weeks impassively on the shelf in the cupboard. At first I was able to gaze on it quite calmly, but the day came when I quietly opened the box and took out not just one, but two. <laughs> then I closed the box, and somehow my misdemeanor went unnoticed. But oh shame, I found myself dipping in regularly. In fact, over a period of time, I kept seeking one or two or more until at last the box was empty. Not only had I eaten the contents, I had never shared them with my faithful partner. 
<laughs> I waited guiltily for the inevitable day he decided we should make a start and took up that empty box. <laughs> what happened to all those chocolates, Ken, in the deep drawer? And the worst part was, I found no way to replace them and thus hide my guilt. Wherever those neighbors who had since moved across the country had purchased them, I don't know. Not anywhere in my vicinity, apparently. Now my family gives me chocolates only on a group occasion. They know my weakness. It's not easy being an addict. <laughs> <laughs>